Hey, welcome back to another Just 15 Minutes, um, or Just 15 Mins, I'm not sure, I'm still playing with that. Anyway, um, yeah, I did a podcast uh, a little while ago, uh, there's a, it's the continuing train of AI hate, hype, I was going to try to get the words out, it, it's relentless, isn't it, the hype, but um, I have to say, uh, two sort of platforms, if you want to call it that, two tools um, that I've sort of gone back to uh, once I've had a chance to have a little bit of a play. Um, one is Cursor, which I looked at and I did a podcast about a few weeks ago, actually. And um, it, it is great. It's built on Visual Studio Code. So I sort of looked at it as thinking, well, it sort of looks like Visual Studio Code, but isn't quite, and I'll use VS Code. Um, I use things like uh, GitHub Copilot or Codium, um, you know, for for the AI aspect. And I was sort of okay with that, but I came back to a Cursor because I saw another video going through a bit more info. And even though you can do this with VS Code and things like probably Codium, I haven't tried, but certainly in uh, GitHub Copilot, you know, you have to pay for GitHub Copilot around about, what is it, $10 a month. So, yeah, okay. And um, anyway, so I came across, oh, sorry, I came back to Cursor. Now, first of all, Cursor, just to be clear, uh, does have, if we have a look at the pricing, if it's going to do that for me, there we go. You've got a free version, um, you can have 2,000 completions and, you know, some slow premium requests as well. So, obviously, for just having a play, this isn't too bad a deal. Uh, $20 a month, which is obviously double the GitHub Copilot, but you tend to... I had a look at this a little bit more in, in detail. I'm using monthly because... Look, obviously, unless you're really invested in something, go yearly, great. But I tend to go monthly, you know, if there's not a massive um, increase, um, then at least I've got the ability to cancel as and when. But even $20 a month when I'm about to show you is not overly bad. So what am I about to show you? I should explain. So what I wanted to try is there's, there's a big, sort of push at the moment about uh, running uh, LLMs, you know, large language models locally, or small language models, SLMs, okay? So what can you actually run locally? Surely you can't run things like, you know, chat GPT, and the answer is absolutely not. There's just too much processing power going on. Um, but there are a lot of um, nice tools, and there's two that I've been working with um, for a little bit now. Um, one is Olama, an open source um, uh, platform for running local uh, large language models locally. Now, they've got a selection of models. Um, Llama is one of the big ones that comes out. Llama 3.2. Um, it's all about these how many parameters, like 1 billion and 3 billion parameters, about how much you can actually process in uh, one chunk sort of thing. So that actually, I'm using this one. Um, and by the way, I, I can show you the specs, but trust me, I've got a, I've got a five or six year old um, Lenovo, uh, I think it's a Lenovo, yeah, it is, Lenovo laptop. And... Um, it's a Core i7, but bearing in mind, it's about six years back. Um, it has got 20 gig of RAM. It, I think it, it came with um, uh, four gig of RAM, which is next to useless. But back in the day, four gig of RAM, yeah, it'll get you going. So with RAM being relatively cheap, I think it still is, but it, we, it was certainly cheap. I just stuck in another extra 16 gig of RAM and that's it. It's not got any fancy NVIDIA graphics card or anything like that. It's just got, I think, Intel, whatever it is, just the embedded Intel graphics card. But I'm able to run these models. Um, I know one of the tricks that it uses, I think they call it quantization, where um, 
it it's literally um it, it can sort of like split fragment the um the the model quantize it essentially um so you don't get all the detail but you get enough to make it still uh, workable there's a bit about that which i can link to i can't remember the full um we'll just use ai to actually pull it up and explain that anyway but the point being this is one um by the way this is quen coda which i'm going to be looking at rather in depth uh, shortly uh, but anyway but the point being is uh, olama is free to download you can download it on all the main platforms i run it as a docker container mainly because i can stop and start that without too much running locally per se you know i can leave it as docker containers it's how i run my uh, sql servers and things like that or if i'm going to do any um uh, i was going to say no development but it's now sort of dino dino 2 uh, or anything like that any of those sorts of sit situations where you need a local dev environment it's just in docker now um if you don't know about docker that's okay um it's pretty straightforward to get going and i i can uh, go through that at some point but the other one today is i'm looking at is lm studio from nvidia themselves okay so again this um uh lm studio allows you to again run local llms um, it's available for all the platforms so so and by the way obviously cursor because it's built on um visual studio uh, code it's it's obviously available for all the different platforms okay so lm studio you can go i'll put the links below but um you can download it for all the different platforms and what you end up with is this if i just show up this screen okay um don't worry about this bit at the moment i'll come back to this in a minute but you you essentially are able to load a model okay so you can go to this little discover here and discover all the models that you can run locally and as you can see the the quen 2.5 coder 14 billion parameter model is getting a, a little bit of a bump because it seems to be quite interesting i haven't had a proper play with it yet but i will now bear in mind some of these models even though they've been quantized as they say um they, they can still be quite large so check your disk space um i'm starting to run out rather quickly but anyway never mind um i think the one that i've got um currently running is this a tiny and speedy llama model from meta okay so this is one that jumps out as being a a really interesting one to run locally running on my as you can see it's already installed um again um yeah you know it wasn't wasn't overly large anyway but but it's still going to be um quite a bit of disk space okay and ultimately you don't really need to do much you can get into the command line but if you're not you know uh, in that world then um, you can do that's that's one thing about uh, LM studio I think is that um, it allows you um, to run things in a more visual way uh, Olama does really but so I shouldn't really be you know too hard on Olama um, but anyway the point being is you've got a chat window so you can actually chat and as of the time of this recording um, you've got the ability a bit like in chat GPT where you can upload um, documents basically and as you can see there it's got PDF plain text or docx okay so I decided to um, create an application and um, where I work uh, we've got um, public white papers like every company but you know there's a lot of pages people reading through and stuff like that and um what i ended up doing is i thought i thought okay i'll use cursor and um i created a i just wanted a a chat bot i've called it eddie bot at the moment now the bit that i think i was missing in in cursor was the the fact that there is a chat so it works a little bit like how you'd expect a chat sort of um a system to work you can ask questions it'll um, help you through what it is that you're 
doing, but there's also a composer. Okay. I think I missed this, or I didn't really investigate it too much. Okay, but basically, I, if I scroll all the way, I said, this was my prompt. I want to create an Azure static web app called Edibot. I have LM Studio running locally on a port. Now, I'll, I'll just quickly show you that. LM Studio, when you install it, okay, you've got a chat window. You can pick from the models above here. I've only got the Llama 3.2 running at the moment. And again, bear in mind, this is running locally, no external access, okay? So the idea is that you can chat. And now I only uploaded one document at the moment. Um, I'll be honest, when I um, add a, a question, it does take maybe about 30 seconds to come back, but that's because it's running on my really inadequate sort of uh, little laptop. If this was running, say if you had a, a server running locally with a bit more um, you know, power or a, a, even a laptop with say a, a standard NVIDIA graphics card, it would run exceptionally smooth. Okay, but anyway, the point being is you've got the chat window, but you've also got this developer. Okay, so any one of the um, models you can actually click and it will give you a port and a URL of where you can actually access that. Now, without going into too much um, detail at the moment, the, the, there's, a, there's a sort of a generic um, uh, OpenAI-like endpoint um, specifier. So these are, these are APIs that you can call into the models, but rather than everybody having their own individual thing, um, at least there's been a bit of, you know, consolidation and you can get things like, you know, you've got a standard set of URL endpoints for the API. So it, it makes it a lot easier. But what you can do with LM Studio is you can start a, a local server, okay, with whichever model you've got selected. Okay, now I've also got a text embedding um, uh, model because obviously I'm going to be uploading um, my own data. And again, that this is something for another day, but what it has to do is take that PDF, that text, that document, and it has to vectorize it. Basically, it has to create, um, turn all that text into numbers. And it isn't just numbers for each character or letter or anything like that. Um, it, it performs the, the whole AI sort of thing where it does a lot of the clever stuff about, you know, where the nearest neighbor is and the, the cluster of like sounding words and context and all that sort of stuff. That's for another day. I'm not explaining it too well in this one, but it, it's not just, you know, um, turning it to numbers. It, it means that it's extending the model um, that I've selected here, Llama. Um, because obviously when we start asking questions, it needs to understand not only the general LLM like ChatGPT does, but it also needs to know what's in those documents in its own AI sort of context. Okay, so <clears throat> yeah, so you can see there's um, there's a few bits and pieces working here. Quantization is in action. Like I say, that's how we get things to run locally. Um, there, there's a few other bits, but that there's the API endpoint. So very quickly, back into cursor, I asked this prompt here, this one that's highlighted, okay? Um, that's all I did. Um, <clears throat> if I just press escape out of there. Um, okay, the, I said I want to create an Azure um, static web app. You could call it anything. You could create whatever you want. Um, and I said, I've got LM Studio running localhost, giving it the URL and the port. Okay. I will need to upload PDFs to the current model in LM Studio, uh, but Edibot is going to allow me to have a chat experience to ask questions across that PDF. Okay, what actually happened, this was completely blank. I just had a blank folder and it generated all the code, all of this. Now, sure, you sort of have to understand what that code is doing. There's no doubt about that. But from a perspective, I could have been very specific because what it's done, it's essentially generated 
um, an Azure function app, um, which is the acting as the API gateway um, to interact with LM Studio, by the way. And it's got a, a front end application, which it's generated using React. OK, now I'm not a React developer. And even though it would work quite nicely, I wouldn't know really, although I probably could pick it up. I mean, I've been a JavaScript developer for some years now. Um, <clears throat> and um, far too long, in fact, really. But there's obviously always stuff changing. Anyway, the point being is, if I wanted it so in something different from React, even just vanilla JavaScript or um, any of the other JavaScript frameworks, I'm sure I could. The point being is, it generated all of this. OK, and it also then in the chat window allows me to go to do some debugging as well, because I, I was missing a few sort of packages and things like that. So it, it's a little bit more in a, in, in a way than just Visual Studio with GitHub Copilot. I think I'm appreciating Cursor, and I know there's now Windsurfer, I think it is, and a few others out there, but right now, this is doing a really interesting job. Again, you've got to sort of know what this code is doing, so it's not for the faint-hearted. At the same time, it's um, it's writing in a very clean way, um, and from a productivity perspective, um, crikey! I mean, I that that's just saved me hours hours of work. You know, literally setting up all the boilerplate stuff and everything else. And again, this is all running locally. Uh, using LM Studio with this developer option. It's completely free. All of these things are free that I've shown. Um, as I say, you can upgrade, you can pay, but to get going, um, you, can, you can certainly have a blast running this stuff locally and seeing what you can actually achieve. So that's what I've got for this time around. Um, I can go into a bit more detail, and I think I should, with some other aspects of things like Cursor and uh, basically uh, AI creating code uh, and some of the, you know, catches that I've come across recently as well. But there we go. So have a good weekend or a week whenever you are watching this and we'll catch you on the next one.